Well, many thanks for joining us. You're watching QTV Media News, and I am Antoine Esonyasi, and here are the main news headlines. President Barrow on Friday inaugurated the newly built $112 million Ibase market to replace the structure destroyed by fire in 2020. The National Disaster Management Agency, on behalf of the Gambia government, on Thursday received 48 tons of food items from the United Arab Emirates for delivery to the July 2021 windstorm disaster victims. 30 inmates and five prison officers graduated on Friday after completing three weeks skills training and entrepreneurship at the Mildrew Central Prison in Banjo. And we hear about the first green solar mini grid plant in URR to provide electricity to homes and businesses and business water in um, Yemenad village and the surroundings in Tumana district. Well, stay tuned as we bring you more on this and other stories. We will now take a look at the news in detail. President Armabaro on Friday inaugurated the newly built Basse market to replace the structure destroyed by fire in 2020. The $112 million infrastructure was fully funded by the Gambia government. Our regional reporter Alaji A.F. Jalo attended the event and he filed in this report. The Basse market was destroyed by a fire in February 2020, causing a huge loss to businesses operating there. The cause of the fire outbreak remains unknown though an electrical fault was the likely cause. Today, a magnificent structure stands tall at the same place where exactly two years ago all hopes were lost. President Adam Barrow, in his inaugural speech says, the Basse markets serve as an important business hub in the region, which compel the government to take swift action to respond to people's need. 17 months ago, when I visited the site to inspect the destruction caused by the fire outbreak that destroyed the old market to the ground. It was heartbreaking to see the extent of the devastation. The loss of goods and assets was enormous, and it affected many households that depended on the market for their livelihood, especially the women of URR. President Barrow added that Funding to reconstruct the market was increased following appeals by the people and Basi Area Council. The initial plan was for 185 subs. But following an appeal by the council and the people of Basi, this was increased by 61 subs. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I am reliably informed that the entire market is paved with reinforced concrete and an effective drainage system in place. We can rest assured that this is a safe five-star market of high quality and international standards. Handing over the keys to Musadrame, the Minister of Transport, Works and Infrastructure by Lamin Job thanked partners for their support. Mr. President, with your permission, I wish at this point to take the opportunity to hand the keys of this market as was handed to me to the Honorable Minister of Local Government and Land. The Minister for Lands, Regional Government and Regional Affairs, Musa Drame, said his ministry will work with Basi Area Council to put in place proper mechanisms to manage the market. To put in place functional and robust management and security structures ensuring a better functioning and well-kept market with preventive measures so incidents of this, the past will not be occurred. Seluba, the Alcala of Basse, heaped praised on the president and his cabinet for responding to the people of URR and on time. Your Excellency, we the people of Basse, we the people of URR, we the people of, of the sub-region, we the people of the entire Gambia, we are very grateful unto you. The $112 million market has five blocks, 246 shops, four vendor seats, and two mini markets, and is equipped with fire hydrants, fire alarms, standard access routes. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alaji F. Jalo.
Now, the Disaster Management Agency, on behalf of the Gambia government, on Thursday received 48 tons of food items from the United Arab Emirates for delivery to victims of the July 2021 windstorm disaster. Yeah, Yaja witnessed the presentation ceremony at the Banjul International Airport and Hina reports. The donation is in response to the July 2021 natural disaster in the Gambia, during which storms led to deaths, caused injuries and destroyed many structures. The beneficiaries are expected to benefit from food items such as rice, millet and other foodstuffs from the United Arab Emirates, UAE. SAIF is UAE's head of African affairs and he spoke on behalf of the five-man delegation to the Gambia. We are here to give the aid from the government of the United Arab Emirates to our, to our brother and friend in Gambia. Uh, the amount of aid is uh, 48 tons of food and humanitarian. Uh, and this is from United Arab Emirates to our friend and brother in Gambia. And we are very happy to, to come here and thank the Gambian for the hospitality and for all the support they give to us. Receiving the donation on behalf of the Gambia government, Sana Dahaba, the executive director of the National Disaster Management Agency, expressed delight at what he called a needful and timely intervention by the UAE and thanked them for the kind gesture and continuous support to the people of the Gambia. He says the UAE has a long-standing relationship with the Gambia and that they were one of the first countries to provide humanitarian support to the Gambia since President Barrow's coming into office. If I can recall, since uh, the election of President Adam Barrow, UAE is among the first countries that provided humanitarian aid to the National Disaster Management Agency. We have a long-standing relationship with UAE um, if you can see, the housing project at Kuntauru was actually funded by UAE and also three bridges were also constructed as well as a dike, a flood protection dike. The country was hit by a heavy windstorm in July 2021, leading to loss of lives and property across the country. The support from the United Arab Emirates will provide some relief to the affected families in terms of food support. However, according to Mr. Dahaba, the NDMA will now focus on disaster mitigation instead of response to address the problems they faced in disaster management. Immediately after the windstorm which occurred last year, the National Disaster Management Agency, in collaboration of the Office of the National Security, embarked on a trip to Dakar to meet our, our partners, philanthropists. Among them is the United Arab Emirates. So we were promised that they are going to respond. Today we are actually witnessing, uh, witnessing the handover of um, assorted food items from UAE to the people of this country. The, the focus of the government of the Gambia is not on response. The focus is mitigation. I think that's, that there has been a paradigm shift from, from response to mitigation. From now on, our partnership will focus on mitigation. That will actually reduce the impact of disaster in this country. According to the NDMA chief, the donated food items will be judiciously distributed to the windstorm victims in line with the response strategies of his agency, which will help the beneficiaries re-establish themselves following the effect of the July 2021 windstorm. Reporting for QTV News, I am Yahya Jao. 30 inmates and five prison officers graduated on Friday after completing three weeks skills training in soap production, micro-gardening and entrepreneurship at the Mile 2 Central Prison in Banjo. Omar Pijalo has the rest of that story. The event was organized by the Gambia Prison Service in collaboration with my farm and funding from the International Trade Center through the Youth Empowerment Project, YAP. The aim of the training was to prepare inmates in marketable skills and to be self-employed or employable and reduce the risk of re-offending when they are released from prison. It also aims to replace inmates' idle time with productive engagements while in detention. Ansman Amane, the Director General of the Gambia Prison Service, said the training of the officers is in line with the government security sector reform objective. For the inmates, it is to bridge the gaps of skills acquisition for their integration into society. We have a series of reformation programs for both officers and inmates. And all this is possible because the government is committed to change concept of prisons from punitive to correctional institution. Ngone Pane from the International Trade Center said her institution recognized the important role of skills in creating decent jobs for young people, including those in prison, 
to contribute to the growth and development of the country. This program was designed to initiate the belief that every person, if given the opportunity, can change and make a better life for themselves, regardless of where they are. This is the spirit of the Youth Empowerment Project. It's also the spirit of the International Trade Center and the spirit of the government of the Gambia. Lucas Barro, the manager of my farm, and Ismail Assise, the principal of Inside Training Center, congratulated the inmates and encouraged them to make good use of the knowledge and skills gained after their release. So this training was all about giving the participants tangi tangible and marketable skills so that they can then go and use in the real world. The first two weeks were just about skills training. It was micro gardening and soap production. The last week was about entrepreneurship. And for the graduates, um, we want to say, make good use of the skills you have. It is not the papers that matters, but the knowledge and the skills that has been transferred to you. Chief Superintendent Karfatamba is the head of inmates training at the Mile 2 Central Prison. Five prison officers were accepted into the training for the purpose of sustainability. The purpose of this initiative is to enable inmates acquire skills on the above mentioned areas and self-supportive when released from prisons. Delivering the message on behalf of the graduates, Alpha Jalla used the opportunity to appeal to the government that give them a second chance to enable them put their newly acquired skills into practice. The government of the Gambia under the leadership of His Excellency the President Adam Abaro to, for the sake of God, give us a second chance regardless of whatsoever mistake or accident one made. He or she can change for the better and do greater things that will remain for the future to benefit. My Farm, a charitable foundation, aims to improve livelihoods in Africa and around the world through education in agricultural innovation, environmental protection, entrepreneurship, and new innovation learning methods. The trainees are 25 male, 5 female inmates, and 5 prison officers. Reporting for KTV News, I am Omar P. Jallo. And the report by Omar P. Jallo will lead us to a short commercial break, but we will be right back. My technology is the answer. I am the happiness in your life. I keep you connected. And I am Q Power. I am QCell. I am Sunibus. We innovate, others follow. Call 111 for more information. Welcome back from our short commercial break. We remind you that you're following QTV Media News and we're coming to you live from our studios on Caraba Avenue. Now, Unique Energy, part of the Unique Group of Companies, on Saturday inaugurated the first green solar mini grid plant in URA to provide electricity to homes and business in Yamanar Village and the surroundings in Tumana District. Alaji A.F. Jalo attended the ceremony and he now reports. The Green Solar Mini Grid Electricity Project for Rural Gambia is co-funded by a grant from the ECOWAS Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency. It will provide electricity to 6,500 people in over 200 households and businesses within the village of Nyamanar and its surroundings. This project will open doors to many opportunities for promoting energy through public-private partnership, create much-needed jobs for young people and impact the lives of thousands of ordinary Gambians who will be able to take advantage of clean and renewable energy sources. Papa Yusuf Anjai, the chairman and CEO of Unit Group said, their desire is to provide uninterrupted, reliable and affordable renewable energy to Gambian household. 
this infrastructure being inaugurated today consists of a land size of about 4,000 square meters given to us by my family and friends of Nyamana. Thank you. It is on this land that we've managed to build the infrastructure consisting of a generation and distribution network. Basaho, the acting director of ECRI, said the awarding of the mini-grid grant to Unigroup should be a springboard for Gambia's mini-grid revolution after competing with over 32 applicants in the sub-region during a three-day forum in Ghana in 2019. The goal of universal access to energy in the ECOWAS region and in Gambia as well is, achieve, is an achievable one. Electricity access rate in the ECOWAS region is just over 60%. And uh, the trend shows that even though we have potential to rapidly progress, there has been very little uh, achievements in this area. Sambaba, the governor of URR, thanked the sponsors on behalf of the beneficiaries. He urged the community of Nyamanar and surrounding to jealously guard and protect the facility. It is indeed a blessing of the people of Nyamana to have the solar mini grid and this will impact positively on the living condition of the people. It has come to revert the unbearable heat condition and will reduce the cost of families to have electricity. Representing the President, the Minister of Petroleum and Energy, Fafa Sanyang, said improving nationwide access to reliable electricity supply that is efficient affordable and environmentally friendly is one of the government's development's aspirations. I reassure you all that my government is committed to achieving universal access by 2025 and this is clearly outlined in the strategic electricity subsector roadmap 2020-2040. Realizing the objectives of the roadmap, however, requires the concerted efforts of all players in the energy sector. The overall objective of ECOWAS Center for Renewable Energy and Efficiency, ECRI, which is headquartered in Cape Verde, is to contribute to the sustainable economic, social and environmental development of West Africa by improving access to modern, reliable and affordable energy services, energy security and reduction of energy-related pollutions. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alaji Evjal. The Ibrikama Area Council, in collaboration with the United Nations Office for Project Services, UNOPS, on Thursday held a public exhibition for the draft Greater Banjul Urban Development Plan 2020-2040. The plan primarily focuses on land use, urban development and related areas for central and local governance. Abibato Sise has more. The development plan is meant to be a guide to promote sustainable urban development, prevent risk exposure and increase climate change resilience through urban planning measures, infrastructure and services development. Abdullahi Jame, Program Manager and Communications at UNOPS Gambia, says this is the first regional exhibition that will serve as a blueprint for the development of Greater Banjul. He adds that it is a joint initiative between the Ministry of Lands and Regional Government, Brikama, Banjul City and the Kanifi Municipal Councils. He highlights the need for urban development. This is the first time in over 30 years that the Greater Banjul area is going through such a planning process. But why does this matter? As our city is growing rapidly, we want to ensure it becomes a place where all citizens can thrive. Jobs, healthcare, education, nutrition. All we want is we don't want this to be threatened by the oceans. City for Sonko, the chairman of the Brikama Area Council, explains the need for urban development, saying that 58% of Gambia's population is concentrated in the Greater Banjul area. He adds that the plan includes digitalization of urban councils for future population growth. I want to confirm to the commitment of my council towards this urban development plan and wish to outline our willingness to enhance intermunicipal cooperation coordination of resources and the capacity to plan and implement, manage and monitor sustainable urban development, amongst others, as enshrined towards the goals of a comprehensive and digitalized urban plan for the Greater Banjo. 
the population of the greater Banjul area is expected to grow as more people migrate to the area. The strategic development plan also focuses on economic growth, climate resilience, housing and people policies, social and gender inclusion. Lamin Sane, the governor of the West Coast region, explains the essence of the Greater Banjul Strategic Development Plan. Well, Bikama as a town, I think, needs more of these things than any others. This is the area where we have seen a lot of migration from rural communities to Bikama here. So therefore, if you want to develop on our economy, if you want to transform the council and the communities, it means we have to get a sort of a, an action like this. The Greater Banjul Sustainable Urban Development Plan will provide guidelines for decision makers for proper actions and preparations for short and long term future population growth. For QTV News, I am Abiba Tusise. Now, following recent fire outbreaks in LRR that affected four households, the region's governor, Rohijuan Manjang, and stakeholders have delivered food items, cash, and materials to the victims. Our regional correspondent Bakari Balde accompanied them and this is his report. Each of the affected families in Soma received rice, cooking oil, mattresses and three thousand dollars. Rohijon Manjang, the governor of Lower River Region, said the visit is to get first hand information about the causes of the fire, provide support and advice on preventing future occurrences. Let people respond to what um, advancement talks about. We all need electricity and electricity is almost coming to everybody's doorstep. But let us manage it according to the standard given by the, uh, those, the, those that are responsible. If you want to wire your house, look for somebody who is qualified enough and would advise you on the material, type of material that you are, you are going to use, depending on the appliance. Momori BKCC, the Regional Disaster Management Officer in LRR, Press Red Cross and the Fire Service in Soma for the collaboration and proactive response to disasters in the region. He calls for more support for the victims. Indeed, we have started um, uh, the support, but we equally soliciting support from any other individual who uh, is uh, having the resources to come to our aid because um, the houses that are affected um, need that um, uh, investment because the rain season is coming, and if the rain meets these uh, buildings in this condition, it will be uh, serious for the households. So um, we have supported them, but we still need some uh, additional support. And then I want to challenge um, households also to be very mindful about uh, fire. Yaya Jajusi, the chief of Jara West, expressed delight, saying the items will be put into good use. On behalf of the beneficiaries, Teresa Jallo, thank the governor and her team for the support. According to the Regional Disaster Management Office in Mansa, Congo, 15 domestic and booth fires have been recorded in the area in recent times. The public is advised to be vigilant to prevent fire outbreaks. Reporting for QTV News, I am Bakar Balde. And before we end, here's a recap from your headlines. President Varro on Friday inaugurated the newly built $112 million Dalasi market to replace the structure destroyed by fire in 2020. The National Disaster Management Agency on behalf of the Gambia government on Thursday received 48 tons of food items from the United Arab Emirates for delivery to victims of the July 2021 windstorm disaster. 30 inmates and five prison officers graduated on Friday after completing three-week skills training and entrepreneurship at the Mile 2 Central Prison in Banjul. And we heard about the first green solar mini grid plant in URR to provide electricity to homes and business in Myanmar village and the surroundings in Tumana district. That is all we have for you in this bulletin. Do join us in the evening for more news. Thanks for watching.